Hello and welcome to my channel. I am Zodiac Bandit, and it is time for another battle royale between characters. And we're doing Tells and Jaffe's characters today. That means Percy, Caduceus, and Ashton. Now there is a name missing from that list that I'm sure most of you have pointed out already, and that is Molly Mock. The issue with Molly Mock is that there is a level five stat or up to level five stat, and then there is a level fifteen stat. I believe it's either fifteen or seventeen. I don't remember which. And that's for Kingsley, obviously. There is no level 10 Molly Mock stat block. And I'm running these characters at level 10 for these uh, death battles as of right now. As that that sounds like a, round, a nice round number. And it's the highest the Bell's Hells are currently. So it's nice and easy for me to be able to just be like level 10. And unfortunately Molly Mock doesn't have that. So I could theoretically go through and make a Molly Mock stat block. And I would roll and you know pick all the stats increases as we go. The issue with that is what I would pick and what Talzin would pick are completely different. He could pick a feat instead of choosing to upgrade his stats. So it's it's something I don't want to do because it wouldn't be authentic to the character. So with that being said, I am electing not to create a level 10 Molly Mock. So if that is something you're you know a little bit upset about, I know some people really wanted Molly Mock to be in this fight. Eventually I will be doing level 15. Uh, characters because I know that stat block exists somewhere for Molly Mock so hopefully we can do that eventually down the line and we can do a four-way battle between these characters or maybe at some point we could do a Bloodhunter versus Bloodhunter thing for Chetney versus uh, Molly Mock or Kingsley but as of right now Molly Mock is not in this but the other three are so just like last time we're going to be doing two fights one is a theoretical fight where I take their like average damage and their average attacking and I see how long it takes for them to kill each other. And then we do an actual fight where I have players do the fight themselves with the stat blocks they have told or that they have. And then from there, we actually do the fight. They roll, they have their initiatives, and it's a nice open space. This time I'm going to try to do it a little differently though. Because, you know, I feel like shaking things up every once in a while is good. So trying different things here will be good. I might try to squeeze in two practical fights and make some differences. Because I truly believe... With some differences, the fight could be totally different based on certain things. But we will get to that. So for now, we're going to go over their abilities, HP, AC, speed, and everything that we need to know before getting into the fights. Let's start with Percy. At level 10, Percy has 74 HP, an 18 AC, and a speed of 30. He has a plus 12 with the pepper box, and he has a plus 13 with bad news, which means he has 75 to 80% chance to hit Ashton, and he has 70 to 75% chance to hit Caduceus. The pepper box has a range of 80 to 320, which means past 80 is disadvantage, and then past 320 means it misses. Bad news is 200 to 800. I'm pretty sure he's a sharpshooter, which might negate that disadvantage though. And now to go over Percy's abilities, he has a fighting style of archery. You gain plus two on attack rolls that you make with range attacks. He gets second wind, which allows him to heal. 1d6 plus his fighter level, so 1d6 plus 10. At level 2, he got Action Surge, which allows him to perform additional actions. He got the Martial Archetype of Gunslinger. Adept Marksman, when you choose this archetype at 3rd level, you learn to perform powerful trick shots to disable or damage your opponents using firearms. His trick shots are Deadeye. You, when you make a firearm attack against a creature, you can expend 1 grit point to gain advantage on the attack roll. He has Violent Shot. When you make a firearm attack against a creature, you can expend one or more grit points to enhance the velocity of the attack. For each grit point you expend, this attack gains plus two to the uh, firearm's misfire score. If the attack hits, you can roll additional weapon damage per grit point spent when determining the damage. He gets grit points, which effectively let him use his trick shots. They're like battle maneuver points for a battle master. But he regains them on a natural 20 roll, and when he uh, deals a finishing blow to a creature of a significant threat, DM's discretion. You regain all expended grip points after a short or long rest. At 5th level, he gets extra attack. At 7th level, he gets quick draw. You add your proficiency bonus to your initiative roll. You can also stow and draw your firearms uh, as a single object interaction. Indomitable. You can reroll saving throws that you fail. If you do so, you must use the new roll. You can't use this feature again until you finish a long rest. At level 10, he gets Weapon Repair. You learn how to quickly attempt to fix a jammed gun. You can spend a grit point to attempt to repair a misfired uh, but not broken firearm as a bonus action. Moving on to Caduceus. Caduceus has 87 HP, 18 AC, and a speed of 30. And normally when I talk about the chance of hitting, I usually take two of the weapons or three of the weapons of the character and say they're plus to hit. 
and their percentage to hit. And those are typically like I would they normally get two attacks if like it's a thing for them. But Caduceus is a little weird as he is I think the first full caster class that we have on here who's not like somewhat melee like a hexblade. So what's weird about Caduceus is he doesn't have a true melee attack. He does have a plus six to hit with his blight staff, which means he has a 45% chance to hit Ashen and a 40% chance to hit Percy. However, the staff has a bonus action to release a swarm of bugs for one minute. So that's what we're going to use in the theoretical fight. This is second attack and it's a hundred percent to hit because if they're just standing in the uh, swarm, they take damage. So that's what we're going to use for Caduceus here because that will balance it out and give him two attacks and will be the same as everyone else. So they all get two attacks now. One's the staff and one is the swarm of bugs. Moving on to Caduceus' abilities, he can cast spells and his spell list will be on the screen right now. Hopefully it's not blurry and I won't leave any wasted space so it should be zoomed in on the actual spells itself. He also has his divine domain which he picked the grave domain. He gets domain spells which are spells unique to his uh, subclass that the rest of the subclasses might not get. He gets a uh, cycle of mortality which when a creature is at zero hit points and he goes to heal it, it takes the highest possible number for each die. He also learns to spare the dying for this. At level two, Caduceus gets channel divinity. At level two, you gain the ability to channel divine energy directly from your deity, using that energy to fuel a magical effect. You start with two of such effects, turn undead and one determined by your class uh, domain. Channel divinity, path of the grave, because turn undead is not really useful in this situation, but path of the grave, you can use your channel of divinity to mark another creature's life force for termination. As an action, you can choose one creature you can see within 30 feet of you, cursing it until the end of your next turn. Uh, the next time you or an ally of yours hits the cursed creature with an attack, the creature is vulnerable to all attack damage, and the curse ends after that. At 5th level, he gets Destroy Undead. Not useful here. At 6th level, Caduceus gets Sentinel at Death's Door. He gained the ability to impede Death's progress as a reaction. When you or an ally you can see within 30 feet of you suffers a critical hit, you can turn that attack into a normal hit. Any effects triggered by a critical are cancelled. You can use this feature a number of times equal to your wisdom modifier, minimum of once. You regain all expended uses uh, when you finish a long rest. Potent spells at level 8. You add your modifier to the damage you deal with any cleric cantrip. At level 10, Caduceus gets divine intervention. You can call upon your deity to intervene on your behalf when your need is great. Imploring your deity, deity's aid requires you to use your action. Describe the assistance you seek and then roll the percentile dice. If you roll a number equal to or lower than your cleric level, then your deity intervenes. The DM chooses the nature of the intervention. The effect of any cleric spell or cleric domain spell would be appropriate. If your deity intervenes, you can't use this feature again for seven days. Otherwise, you can use it again after you finish a long rest. Moving on to Ashen. They have 117 hit points at level 10. They have 17 AC and 40 speed. Chance of hitting Ashen has a plus 8 with their hammer and has a 50% chance to hit both Caduceus and Percy. Uh, he can have more range depending on what type of rage he gets. Moving on to Ashen's abilities, they can enter a rage and they get the following benefits. They have advantage on strength checks and saving throws. When you make a melee attack weapon using your strength, you gain the benefit damage from raging. And you have resistance to bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage. Rage lasts for a minute, or until you're knocked unconscious, or if you don't get to attack or take damage in a turn. Unarmored defense, while you're not wearing any armor, your armor class is, is 10, plus your dexterity modifier, plus your constitution modifier. You can use a shield and still gain this benefit. Danger sense, you have uh, advantage on dexterity saving throws against effects that you can see, such as traps, spells, etc., to gain this benefit, you can't be blinded, deafened, or incapacitated. Reckless attack, he gets to take attacks at advantage, but they get to attack at advantage as well. Primal path, path of fundamental chaos. This is going to be where the doozy comes in. Chaos burst upon choosing this path at third level, a fundamental chaos barbarian can choose a to deal extra damage on a attack with a chaos burst. This allows them to add additional damage dice to the attack with a melee weapon. A number of times per day equal to their proficiency bonus. Damage type depends on the rolled dice. This includes acid, lightning, force, cold, fire, psychic, and thunder. At third level, the damage dice becomes or is 2d4. 
and it increases at higher levels. It becomes 2d6 at level 14, but that's not important yet. Fundamental Force. At third level, when a Barbarian enters a, their rage, they invoke Fundamental Force. The type of uh, rage is determined by randomly throwing or rolling a 1d4 whenever the Barbarian begins their rage. Temporal Morass or Time. Hostile creatures that start their turn within 15 feet of the Barbarian must make a Constitution saving throw to avoid having their speed halved and losing their reaction. The DC is 8 plus the Proficiency modifier plus uh, Constitution modifier. Violent Getaway or Space, when the Barbarian reduces this creature's health points to zero uh, with a melee attack, they can teleport up to 60 feet to a point they can see. Orbital Decay or Gravity, or when Raging Gravity seems to have more pull for everyone in the room, enemies within 15 feet of the Barbarian who try to go away from the Barbarian may either have their speed reduced by 10 feet or may be pulled to, uh, up to 10 feet toward the Barbarian uh, and suffer disadvantage on attacks against the creatures other than the Barbarian. Probability Matrix or Potential. Each ally within 10 feet of the Barbarian can add a D4 to uh, attack rolls and saving throws. At 5th level, Ashen gets an extra attack and fast movement, so their speed increases by, five, or by 10 if they're not wearing heavy armor. At level 6, Ashen gets Fundamental force enhancement uh, at level six a raging barbarian can choose to spend a chaos burst uh, triggering a different effect for each rage type hyper rage time the barbarian's speed is doubled and they can use a bonus action to make an additional attack or a disengage action wormhole strike or space the barbarian can open up two portals one next to themselves and one uh, next to another point within 60 feet of them they may attack a creature through the portal and if the two portals are Adjacent to one another, the attack deals an extra 1d6 damage. Density well, gravity. The barbarian cannot move or cannot be moved against their will or knocked prone. And when they hit a creature with a melee attack, it must make a strength saving throw or be knocked prone. Dreadful misfortune or potential. When a creature misses the barbarian with an attack, the barbarian can use their reaction to force the creature to re-roll an attack against itself. On a hit, the creature takes half damage. At level 7, they get feral instinct. Your instincts are honed, so you have advantage on uh, initiative rolls. Additionally, that he cannot be surprised anymore. At level 9, he gets Brutal Criticals. He gets to add an additional damage dice for weapon attacks if he crits. And at level 10, he gets Erratic Defense. When hit by an attack, uh, the Barbarian can use their action or their reaction to become resistant to all damage. And additionally, random effects occur depending on a D4 roll and their, of the damage type. Once... This ability is used. It can't be used again until the Barbarian finishes a short rest. Now, as of right now, there's only two seemingly known for Ashen's uh, erratic defense. Time, the attacking creature is slowed, possibly the effects of the slow spell until the end of the next turn. And space, the attacking creature is teleported 30 feet to a space of the Barbarian's choice. Now that we've gone over all their abilities, it's time for us to look over the average damage for each character per turn. And this is assuming they hit twice. We're starting with Percy. For Percy, his average damage per turn with the Pepper Box is 22 if he hits twice. And it's 18 with Bad News. As he has to reload for an action, so he can't really attack twice with it. We're not including Action Surge for this theoretical fight or Sharpshooter for the damage. Percy uses the Pepper Box, takes out Caduceus in four turns. And using Bad News, it takes five. Percy using the Pepper Box takes out Ashton in 11 turns. And with bad news, it's 13. Both uh, include rage for Ashton's defense there. Moving on to Caduceus' average damage. Caduceus averages 4 damage from his staff and then plus 8 from the bugs, making his total uh, average damage per turn 12. It takes 7 turns for Caduceus to take out Percy, and it takes nearly 20. It's actually 19.5 turns to take out Ashton, but he won't realistically be able to do anything after that if this is how he's doing it, so... He has to take the 20 turns to take out Ashen, which is awful for Caduceus here. And going on to Ashen, Ashen's average damage per turn with his hammer is 26, including Rage if they hit twice. It takes Ashen 3.5 turns to take out Caduceus and Percy. It's exactly the same across the board for both of them. And for the result, the winner of this fight is very clear. Ashen wins the theoretical fight. They take the other two out faster and they survive the longest. Barbarians have a clear edge in these theoretical fights, taking twice as long to be taken out as huge. This style of fight goes against everything a caster does by not taking magic into account. 
So just like last time, we're doing an actual fight where three of my players will be going head to head to head as each character in a death battle to see how an actual fight would play out. However, things are different from the Travis PC death battle. Last time I was in the fight, but this time I have three other players taking part in it while I will be watching so I can sort of take better notes and make sure that the fight goes smoothly and that everyone sort of gets their abilities read out and two, pe two people are sort of on the same style. I'll be effectively a DM in this moment. Also, unlike last time, each player received their uh, character via a random roll of a D6. I did this to avoid telling the other players of the classes so this way no one is focused on within the first couple of turns it takes a second to realize who the caster is and who might be the biggest threat and you know like i said just like last time ford was immediately charged out of the gate by both chetney and grog which made it a super 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 tight fight when realistically ford would have had at least one turn to sort of whittle one of the two of them down this time i don't believe this will happen right away and we will give caduceus some time to build up some of his defenses that he desperately needs and it should be able to allow percy to create some space for his ranged weapons. Last time I put a flight restriction on Ford, but this issue isn't present for the fight, thus no, there is no spell restrictions. Just like last time, there will be no flanking, so if there are players lined up in a row, no one gets advantage from it. I'm recording this part of the video before we do the fight, so it's fair and for me to give a prediction. I think this time, Percy might come out on top, especially if Ashton's like, attention becomes divided between Caduceus and between uh, Percy. So I think Percy might come out with this one. I do think it's also very likely that Ashen could come away if Percy elects to just choose to go after the caster, which might be very dangerous for Percy thinking he's got the range on Ashen and suddenly he gets whacked. So I think either one of those two could win. I'm kind of leaning toward Percy, personally. That being said, Ashen does resist Percy's damage, so I might actually change that. I'm thinking Ashton's going to win because, you know, barbarians are pretty nasty. So I think this time we might actually have a dual winner for the for the video where one person won the theoretical and that same person won the good old-fashioned practical there's one more thing i do want to bring up and it's about caduceus caduceus is a prepared caster caduceus every morning can pick spells and his spell list is kind of shit for a fight scenario however i'm going to try to convince my players to do two fights one where we go strictly based off the spell list that Caduceus has, and then one where we give him spiritual weapon and inflict wounds just in case Ashen gets up in his face. I think it's incredibly important for him to have those spells. Those are classic cleric spells, and I think it's super important. I think it will drastically change how the fight will go if he has those spells. And if he did, I would have used spiritual weapon as his attack for the uh, theoretical fight. But unfortunately, that's not in the spell listing. And I'm pretty sure Caduceus barely used either of those spells. He more relied on spiritual uh, guardians to sort of protect himself. But spiritual weapon is such a huge boon to a cleric that I desperately think that it's going to be needed for even Caduceus to come out on top. So there's going to be two fights, hopefully. And if there's not, I'll, you know, mention that at the beginning of the video. So with all of that out of the way, it's time to roll initiative. And welcome to the present where the fight has now taken place and you are seeing some footage of it right now. I do want to mention two things before we truly get started into this fight here. And that is, one, I missed something yet again, which was the AC is actually supposed to be 19 for Caduceus. And that is the only thing we've missed. So hopefully that doesn't affect things too much. The theoretical, it doesn't affect the theoretical fight at all. And realistically, it didn't affect this fight coming forward either. So time to get into initiative. First up is Caduceus with a natural 20 for 21. Natural 20s beat everything. Percy got a 25, and Ashton got a 10. First turn, Caduceus casts Ray of Enfeeblement on Ashton. Uh, he makes the hit, so Ashton now has uh, his attacks halved until he can make the save. Caduceus then walks up to Percy, and that ends his turn. Percy is up. He tries to move back away from Caduceus, and Caduceus, uh, Caduceus reaction casts Blight on Percy. Uh, Percy makes a save and takes 15 damage. Percy then moves his full movement away from Caduceus and takes a shot at Cad with bad news. Uh, using Deadeye and Sharpshooter, hitting for 30 damage on Caduceus. And Cad saves his concentration check on Raven Feebleman. Percy then pulls out the Pepper Box and shoots Caduceus again for 12 more damage. Ashen's up. Ashen walks up to Cad and then rages. He rolls time. He uses a Chaos Burst and hits Cad for 6 damage. 
Cad saves the check for his concentration. Ashen hits again for six more damage. And then Ashen... Um, Ashen then rolls the save for Ray of Enfeeblement and succeeds. Turn two, Cad fails the uh, Temporal Morass, getting hit, or getting his speed halved. Cad casts Sanctuary on themselves and then uses Divine Intervention and rolls a 78, so it doesn't work. It's worth a try, worth a try. Percy is up, he tries to shoot Cad, but because of the Sanctuary, uh, he doesn't get to shoot him. So he shoots at Ashen instead. He hits Ashen for four damage. He then shoots Ashen again for seven more damage. And then Action Surge. Percy then breaks through the Sanctuary and deals 11 damage to Caduceus. Uh, he shoots Cat again but misses. Uh, and that ends his turn. He runs away a bit more actually before he ends his turn. Ashen is up. Uh, they can't hit through Sanctuary. So the Chaos Burst. Uh, so they get 80 uh, feet of movement. And they run up to Percy. Cad uses his reaction to cast Vampiric Touch, which hits, dealing 11 damage, and heals Cad 5 damage, or 5 HP. Ashton then hits Percy, Reckless Attack for 11 damage, Second Attack crits for 16 damage. Uh, he then bonus action attacks a third time, thanks to the Time Rage, and hits again for 11 more damage. Turn 3, Cad casts uh, Raven Feelment again on Ashton and hits again. So now Ashen's attacks are half once more. Cad then uses uh, Hidden Step to turn invisible and then tries to run away and gets his ass out of the action for a while. Percy fails the Temporal Morass and tries to run closer to where Cad, uh, Caduceus was and takes a reaction from Ashen, which hits for uh, 18 damage. Percy reloads Bad News and then spends 2 Grit Points uh, for a Violent Shot and Sharpshooter. Which hits on Ashton. Ashton moves up to Percy. Misses the first attack and hits the second for 5 more damage. He then saves his Ray of Enfeeblement save. Turn 4. Cad is now visible. He moves up to cast Sacred Flame on Ashton. Which he succeeds the save on. And, the, and then he just chooses to cast Sanctuary again. Percy fails Temporal Morass. He then uses his uh, Rapier for 9 damage. Which hits again. All right, and then he hits again for 5 more damage. It's not Ashen's turn. He attacks Percy and Chaos Burst. Hitting for 17 damage. Putting Percy down. He then runs up to Cad. And Sanctuary stops the uh, bonus attack. Cad uses the Shield of Retribution after Ashen hits. Ashen fails and is pushed back uh, a couple of feet. And takes 20 force damage. By the way, uh, whenever I mention something like Temporal Morass or this Shield of Retribution, I should be putting what it does on the screen the first time it gets used. So hopefully I'm doing that. And this is my reminder to do so. Anyway, moving on. Caddy is now up. He casts Anti-Life Shell. Again, this will be appearing on your screen right now what it does. He then uses his Blight Staff to summon a Swarm of Beetles. He puts it on Ashton, who takes 6 damage. Percy fails a death save. That's one death save. Ashton is up. He runs back to Percy and then uses Pass Without a Trace and hides behind the body of Percy and rolls a 31 on stealth. Caddy is up. He moves up and doesn't see Ashton. He rolled really low well on the perception check. Percy then succeeds his death save. Ashton is up. He continues to hide. This same shit continues for eight turns. During this time, Percy saves enough uh, death saves to be unconscious. After eight turns, Caddy finally sees Ashen. Uh, in, two, in two turns, by the way, Percy wakes up with one hit point. That's how regaining consciousness works. After about a minute, you gain consciousness again. Caddy sees that Percy is breathing. Caddy moves up and casts Guiding Bolt on Percy, and it hits, uh, KOing him again. Percy fails the first death save of this new rotation. Ashen gets up and rages. He gets space. He uses Chaos Burst to open a portal between... Uh, sorry, to open a wormhole but misses. Turn 9, Caddy is up. He moves away and casts Guiding Bolt, uh, which hits Ashen, uh, who uses Erratic Defense, pulling Caduceus in front of him, ending Anti-Life Shell. This was a ruling that we all sort of agreed on. Basically, the way you get rid of Anti-Life Shell is like something has to be forcefully moved through 
it to be removed, and we felt like this fit the criteria, Ashton was able to pull um, Caduceus towards him, putting him inside the anti-life shell, which we deemed to be enough to sort of get rid of the anti-life shell. It was an agreed-upon thing at the table. All four of us agreed that this was the right choice. Ashton still takes 7 damage. They're both at 27 hit points. Caddy tries to move 5 feet away. Percy fails another death save. He now has 2 fails out of 3. Ashton is up. He recklesses. Uh, and he attacks. He hits the first one dealing 16 damage. And he hits the second one dealing 8. Caddy has 3 hit points. Caddy casts command on Ashton who saves. Percy dies off in the corner, failing his last death saving throw. Ashen is up, and he swings, and this is what KOs Caddy, uh, he, who is now on the ground, and Ashen just takes the rest of his time just to kill him. It's over. And so, there you have it. The fight is now over, and Ashen is our winner, and my prediction was way off. I assumed that Ashen and Percy would be the last two standing. I assumed that uh, Percy would be able to make the space uh, like fast enough. But depending on what Ashton rolled for the rage, Ashton would have been able to catch up no problem, which is what happened. And I assumed Caduceus would not do this well. I assumed because they had very little damage that they would have to rely on the other two fighting. And once the others see that they're, that Caduceus really isn't doing much, then there would be some problems for Caduceus as they probably get gangbanged or whatever. That being said, Caduceus did really well, which is why we're not doing a second fight. Because... I feel like if we gave him things like Blight or Spiritual Weapon, not Blight, um, wow, Inflict Wounds or Spiritual Weapon, then the fight would be a no contest. Like, it would be very clearly in the path of Caduceus because not being able to get hit b by via, like, both Sanctuary and Anti-Life Shell was massive for Caduceus. And luckily, depending on what rage Ashen got, he was able to break through and sort of deal with Sanctuary and Anti-Life Shell. So it was overall a really fun fight. The, I'm not shitting you, the eight turns it took for fucking Caduceus to finally see Ashen was crazy. And I'm shocked that they were got that close to Percy being able to stand back up with one hit point. But unfortunately for Percy, it didn't quite happen. And then he ended up dying off in a corner, which was sad, but also kind of funny. But yeah, overall, this was a fun fight. I enjoyed it very much. And yeah, our winner is... Ashton, who won both the theoretical fight and the practical fight, which is really cool, which did not happen last time. Last time, obviously, the winners were different for the two. So yeah, I'm very excited to uh, move on from this fight to another fight, which has already been decided who is going to be the next fight, and the players have already been given their character sheet, so hopefully we'll be able to see any mistakes early on this time, so I don't make any mistakes like saying he has 18 AC instead of 19 for Caduceus, but... That's only one mistake, which we missed this time, and luckily caught for the actual fight. The next fight is going to be Marisha's characters, so obviously that means Keyleth, Bo, and Ladna. I'm super excited for this one. Um, we have all the resources necessary to look at all these characters, because, you know, finding information on Ashton was hard. But luckily we were able to, and I'm going to leave a link to the exact website that we used for uh, Ashton's stuff. Someone has been taking a great deal of time to go over all the episodes and read what or look into what all of Ashen does and make a nice table for it. So if you've been looking to play this class, it's now available. You can find it. I really wish Matt would just release it already. But yeah, that being said, I will see you guys next time for whatever video I make next. Peace.